Hi there. As is usually the case, this week's episode of Ask Mr. Wonderful was inspired from a question. This one from Zoe. Um, really intriguing. Love that name, by the way. Zoe writes, I watched your Ask Mr. Wonderful episode when you explained how you made your first million. I like the story, but it seems to me you surrounded yourself with a lot of successful people that helped along the way. I just graduated college and I'm contemplating my next move, but after watching that, I know I need to work for myself too, so I have to start my own business. My question is this, what are the characteristics of successful people? I'd like to know and maybe adopt these myself. What I like about your question is you basically are talking about self-betterment. You're, you're trying to learn from the characteristics of people that have proven themselves to be successful. I think that's fantastic. But I would also say that it's, it's important to think when you're starting a business, if you're going to take that entrepreneurial route, that you need to build a team. Most successful companies are aggregations of teams where one person's skill set augments the others. In other words, what I've learned, and you know, you, a lot of people think one person can do it all, you can't. You, generally people have something they're really, really good at and they also have a huge deficit. And in my case, I love sales and marketing, but I hate logistics. I hate making widgets, but I can't have a business if I don't make widgets. So I had to find a great widget guy and, and that kind of thing. And as it turned out, it was a woman. And so at the end of the day, you need a partner um, that, that, can, that can, can build an, a, that team. And so I would highly recommend if you're going to start a business, you want to find somebody that you really like in terms of their skill set. Not that are a friend of yours, someone whose skill set's fantastic. So I'm going to walk you through what I think really matter. Um, you know, about what, what these, let's call it the five things of successful people. If you, if you go look at any successful entrepreneur, even a politician or a preacher or a soldier, whatever, what makes them successful? Number one on the hit parade, ambition. The desire to go somewhere. The, the myopic focus that there's something, you're here for a reason and you want to get that done. Whatever that is for you, it's never work when you're pursuing your ambition. It, it's, just, it's just who you are. It's your, it's your soul. It's your being. And I think that's what make, makes great entrepreneurs or great leaders. They, they want to get up in the morning. They want to do what, they, you know, what their ambition is telling them they have to do. Ambition is a drive. It's a vision. It's a drive. It sounds like you might have that, Zoe, which would be very interesting. Number two, and this kind of is a little intuitive if you think about it, you have to care about yourself. You have to, you have, to have self-esteem. You have to believe in yourself, even if others around you don't. Even if they doubt you, even if they think that, that you're wrong, you can't have that feeling about yourself. You have to have your own perception that you are right, and I'm not saying you know, belligerent, but that you are worth every ounce of your being and that you respect yourself that way. Now, it doesn't mean you can't listen to other ideas, but you have to have a, a, a vision, a direction. If you don't know where you're going, Zoe, no one will ever follow you there. I've said that countless times, and it remains true today as it will a thousand years from now. People want to follow those that understand the road, the direction, and, and you have to have that. You know, let me be trite about it. The kind of food you, you eat, the exercise, um, you know, how you look, how you, how you feel about yourself, how you dress, how you present yourself. In, in the last few years, I've started to say to myself, well, gee, um, you know, maybe I shouldn't, when I'm walking outside, I should have some sunblock on. That, that sounds, sounds crazy. No, but I, I want to feel good about myself. So I'm using, you know, a shout out to my sponsor this week. Tish Hanley, I use their products because they don't have a lot of perfume. They have zero perfume in them. I don't like that smell and I like their products. We talk about what, what it takes to be successful. Taking care of yourself and looking good is important and I care about that. Tish Hanley is, is a skincare program but it's not complicated. The stuff isn't overly perfumey. I don't like that. If I'm going to spend some time outdoors like I am today and I just finished shaving, I got to protect my skin. I don't want to get fried. And I got, you know, the Dome of Desire. I've got to cover that up because that can get burnt really easily. So I use the AM from T. Hanley because it's 20 SPF. So sun protection and a moisturizer. You just apply it really easily. It doesn't smell, you know. I want to look good forever, if you know what I mean. I don't want to get too wrinkly and you don't want a lot of sunburn for that. 
So that feels great. So look, try these products. Um, I use them. The soap's fantastic, the scrubs and all that. I mean, the, the whole package ships to you. It's really easy. It's a subscription service. Look, what can I say? I like it. They got a great deal for my followers. So click on the link, try them. And uh, yeah, it looks good. <laughs> and I like it because that when I finish shaving and I put on whatever I'm putting on, I feel I'm ready to go present myself. Sounds corny, you wouldn't believe how important that is, particularly if you're going to stand up or go in front of a lot of people. You want to feel good about yourself. Number three, then there's no real order to these in terms of weight, although I would say ambition is always going to be the top of the list, but a willingness to learn and listen. You can't believe how many people can't shut up and listen. I learned that from one of my women CEOs years ago. She told me, Kevin, you seem to spend 66% of your day talking and only 33 and a third percent, you know, listening. Reverse, change, because you'll learn a lot more. It'll become far more effective. You just shut your mouth and listen to what's going on around you. And she was right. And today, I really try and balance that out. Two thirds listening, you know, one third talking. So the willingness to learn comes from the desire to just absorb information and it's really important. With that comes something that is extremely hard for entrepreneurs to do. Have patience. That's number four. You've got to have patience. You have to hold back. You have to wait and see what happens. You have to let things develop. You can't just jam everything. It doesn't work that way. You learn that through experience and it's so important that you, you understand you must be patient with people, you must be patient with plans, you, you must be patient with you know, everything. You, you can't get what you want right away. It just doesn't work that way. People that are patient are incredibly effective because in the long run, they get stuff done. You have to kind of sit back and assess things. That's what patience is. It's an assessment of your, of your situation. And I wanna tell you something that is really important and it's number five. You are going to fail in life. Everybody does. Something you want, you can't achieve, you fail. You must be able to start again. You must learn from the mistake, and it sounds so obvious, but you can't believe how many people say, oh, I tried it, it didn't work, and I just never pursued another opportunity again. Great leaders, great entrepreneurs, great people learn from their mistakes, but they don't let it get them down. Like great, great, great successful people are always saying it was a horrific outcome, really big mistake, lost you know, $100 million if you're a CEO or something. It was really bad, but I realized the mistake I made and I started again. And that kind of goes with the idea that you must be patient to be successful. If you're an entrepreneur, you only need one great idea that takes you from being an operator to an investor and that's solving someone's problem in the world and doing it millions of times over. That's what, how great companies are created. But along the way, you are going to have to use all five of these elements to keep you moving forward. So let's summarize again. It was ambition. Ambition is the driver. It's the engine. It's the machine that pushes you forward. Self-care, to feel good about yourself, whatever it takes to put you as being a fan of you, like making sure that you do not, you must appreciate yourself, that's very important. Number three, you've gotta have a willingness to learn. And that means shutting up and, li and listening. Four, you have to have patience. And five, very important, the ability to fail and start again. I guarantee you, Zoe, that you will find all five of these in any successful person you meet. If you want to take on any of these attributes, it will be a good thing for you. I'm going to share a little trick with you and all viewers. You see these pencils here on my desk? I've got these all over the place. I got probably thousands of these. And I have this. This is the lowest tech thing you've ever seen, sticky note. During the day, here's one I just, this morning, I write down things I have to get done. I know it's low tech. There's all kinds of software can do this for you. I don't care. I like pulling a pencil and simply writing down, oh yeah, I gotta get that thing done, and just making that note. I learned this from a very successful person years and years ago, my mother. And 
this note just sits here all day and at night if I haven't finished and usually there's three or four I haven't done I look at it and say okay tomorrow I will get this done before anything else before you know I, I go online before I read anything you know I go watch television before I make any phone calls or texts or anything I'm gonna get this thing done and I stick it on the mirror on the right hand side number one Record baseline for track 15. All right, so I found a piece of music that I recorded back in 89. I'm working on a documentary about uh, watch dials, which I think you're gonna find interesting when I finally get it finished, but it needs the music so the editors can work with the beat of the music. And this thing I recorded in 89 does not have any bass, and I didn't play bass back then, now I do. So I'm gonna go back in the studio and lay down the bass track for track 15. Reconcile foreign currency. I have investments um, over in Europe and um, each month I reconcile to the currency to figure out how much of the performance was gained or lost by the change in the currency rates. So I want to do that this morning. It's important to get that done for last month because, you know, if you don't have that information, you can't make moves. And number three, tape questions four and five for Tax Hive. Tax Hive is a new uh, business I've got involved in as an investor and also as a spokesperson. This is a company that helps small business with their taxes and payrolls, very important in my portfolio of companies. So I'm recording some uh, messages and four and five have to be done today, so I'm going to go in the studio and record those. Great take. That's the one. Before I do anything else today, these three puppies are going to get done. And that is how you get super productive. And you don't let anything distract you. You don't take a phone call, you don't do emails, you don't do anything. You get the things done that you made the priorities the night before. Do it every day, try it, it's fantastic. Look at this low tech, low tech. You write it down on a piece of paper, stick it on the mirror. Come on, it works. You can't believe how productive you become with this simple trick. It's incredible, it's absolutely amazing. It just drives you forward because you're getting it done, you're getting it done, you're getting it done, and you're doing it day after day after day. I don't stop on weekends. It's every friggin' day I do it. Every single day. And they can be all kinds of different things, but they're things you gotta get done. Could be something you're doing with your significant other, could be something you're doing in arts, could be something you're doing for business, doesn't matter. It's one of those things. Try that trick. It's probably the best thing you can learn from this week's episode. Anyway, Zoe, I love the question. Thank you very much. Till next time. Talking about characteristics of successful people, I've always believed that you, you, need, to, you need to mix yin and yang together. You know, business is so binary. I've said this a million times, black or white, you make money, you lose money. Arts are, are chaos. So if you're, you know, whatever it is, whether it's photography, whether it's music, if you're gonna pursue a business track, you also have to, nourish your, your other side, your artistic side. And so that's why I always tell people if you play something, stay with it. Or you know, if you're a photographer, a painter, whatever, do that. So recently, um, you know, my family's pretty musical. My sons are a wicked guitarist. And he was learning the lead to Hotel California, which is a bitch. It's not easy to play. And you know, it's it's iconic and he was listening to the record and working on it and he said to me, Dad, I think this is capoed uh, up two frets. And I said, no, 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 no. They, they didn't use a capo on, on when, they, when they laid down Hotel California. A capo is a thing like this. You clamp it across your guitar frets and you can play at a higher key. Uh, I said, no way, they're not using a capo on this. And he said, no, I think they are. So we get in a bit of an argument and then I remember it. I just got back from shooting Shark, Shark Tank a couple of seasons ago. And I love to hang out at this restaurant called Craig's and I think um, Joe Walsh owns a piece of it or something, but anyways, he was sitting there. So I just went over and said hi, we were talking about Shark Tank and, and it was fun. And I thought to myself, why don't I just text Joe Walsh and get this argument over with, just in case he answers me. Here's my text. Joe, Kevin O'Leary here. My 20 year old son Trevor, who is now an amazing guitarist, is learning Hotel California on a six string with a capo. I told him that the song is not played with a capo, sorry to bug you, but who's right? I'm thinking the guy's never going to respond to me. But Joe Walsh is a nice guy. Anyway, seconds later, here he comes back. You're both right. Don Felder's opening of the song, the descending line, was done on a capo 12 string to voice it higher. 
all the guitar work except that was done on non-capoed standard tuning six string electrics. Hope that helps. Best Joe. <laughs> I love that. It really helps. So we all got together and we did Hotel California. And yeah, I'm using a capo. Basically, we're both right, but Trevor was right about, you know, it was being voiced higher. Listen to his lead on it. He's, he's, this is one of the first takes he ever did. It's fantastic. The guy's good. Yeah.